All right, welcome to the unit two and three test overview. I'm gonna go over these practice problems, how to work through them. Uh, you can also use this as answer key. <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, please review the following it, 14 things before taking the test. And the practice problems are based off of the study guide. So here we go, uh, practice problems. <clears throat> gonna do, I'm uh, gonna fill out this chart with the three subatomic particles. So these are particles that are smaller than the atom that make up the atom. So notice we have protons that are positive. We have electrons that are negative, and then of course neutrons that are neutral. Okay, protons have a mass. Protons and neutrons have a mass of one amu, um, but electrons are so small that we say that they have no mass. And then as to the location, these guys are in the nucleus. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus whereas electrons are in the cloud, they're outside, okay, in the orbit. Okay, in the next part, nuclear chemistry, we're going to be um, balancing these nuclear equations. So I have x here. Now everything to the right of the arrow needs to add up together, so this is going to be 3. 3 plus 0 gives you 3. And then what plus negative 1 gives you 1? Well, it's going to be 2. Okay, 2 plus negative 1 gives you one. Okay, so um, the left and the right side of the arrow need to equal to each other. That's a key, key thing to remember. All right, and because there's an electron in the products, remember that products are towards the right of the arrow, and then we have reactants towards the left of the arrow. Let's spell that weird. Okay, so if it's in the products, it's a decay. So this would be beta decay. Okay, electrons are beta particles. Okay, the next thing we're going to, and um, of course, you can look on the periodic table to figure out what this the identity of this element is. We look for the two. That is the number of protons. So this would be a helium, helium atom. Okay, next. We have uranium that decays. Again, this has to add up with the 228 to give you 232. So this would be 4 and 2. Okay, then 90 plus 2 gives you 92. And then the 228 plus 4 gives you 232. And 4 over 2 is a helium nucleus, which is also an alpha particle. So this would be alpha decay. Okay, the next one. Mm -hmm. So zero and negative one. Negative one plus 59 gives you 58. So this would be also an electron. So beta decay. All right, this one is 65 plus zero. And then notice there's a positive. So something plus 1 gives you 30, so 29 plus 1 is 30. Okay. So because it's a positive electron, we call it positron decay. Okay. Okay, we didn't really talk about positrons too much, very similar to an electron. All right, next thing, 0 and plus 1, again, positron. Positron decay. Okay, this one is zero zero, no change. Gamma decay. <laughs> it's rather a photon of light that is emitted. Okay, next. Again, these are the hardest ones, so be careful. What plus four gives you two twenty two? So it's 218. Okay, so you almost have to subtract. And then 84. And again, this arrow is an important thing. Both sides of the arrow have to equal to each other. Okay, we could find the identity of that element later. Okay, next one. Zero 
And negative one, so it's b to the t. <coughs> This one would be, so what plus 4 gives you 239, so this would be 235 and 92. Okay, uranium plus alpha decay. And then lastly, 0 and plus 1, positron. All right, and of course, we could also have um, alpha or beta capture, right? If I had 15O plus the alpha particle. Okay, this is just a hypothetical example. Okay, you notice that if the, if the radioactive particle is in the reactants, if it's on the left side of the arrow, it would be an alpha capture. Okay, instead of decay, it would be capture if the radioactive particle is in the reactants. If it's to the left of the arrow, it wouldn't be alpha decay anymore, it would be alpha capture. Okay, but same thing, you would just add them up. Okay, both sides have to equal to each other. Okay. Alright, moving on, continuing on, so thorium-234 decays by alpha. Okay, so decays mean that the decay is in the products. So 230 and thorium, let me get my periodic table. Okay, thorium, where's thorium? Right here, so 90. Atomic number is 90. So this would have to be 88. Okay, F, E, so f yeah, that number, that it's the dash number, that is atomic mass. We have to find the atomic number, which is the whole number. So 26 for iron. And again, it's another decay, beta. So 0, negative 1. So it'd be 27 and 59. Okay, technetium, 99, technetium right here, 43, gamma, so no change in the mass, carbon 11, carbon is 6, I think, yeah, 6. Electron key. So notice this one is capture, which means that the electron or the beta particle is in the reactants to the left of the arrow. 11 and 5. Okay. Okay, the different part of, uh, properties, right? Alpha are these guys, these symbols. Beta is actually electron, the electron that is emitted. <clears throat> Alpha, um, in terms of uh, danger or penetration, gamma is the, is the most penetrative. Um, you would need two meters of concrete in order to block it. Uh, beta, you would just need like a sheet of metal or a sheet of glass to block it. And alpha is like a piece of paper or even your, just your skin would block alpha. Okay, so gamma is probably the high, highest energy and most dangerous particle. It's actually a wave. Yeah, you know, like gamma rays. Okay, atomic mass. So we have 60.4%. That's the mass. The rest, so we have to calculate 100 minus 60.4. So what is that? 100 minus 60.4 is 39.6. So 39.6 of it is 70 AMU. So again, we take the percentage. 0.604. Times, remember because it's out of 100, I have to move the decimal, divide by 100 to get it into a decimal. So times by 68.9257. And then I'm going to add that to 0.396 times 
Okay, so 0 0.604 times 68.9257 added to 0.936 multiplied by 70.9249. Okay, and that gives me 69.72. Okay, and you. So that's the average atomic mass. Okay, half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years. One-sixth of it remaining. How old is the sample? So again, we can just do this uh, manually, right? So, okay, let's say we have 100% of it. 5,700 years later, we have 50% of it. Okay, or one half. Okay, after another 5,700 years, we have one fourth of it. Another 5,700 years, we have one eighth. Another 5,700 years, we have one sixteenth. So, what is 5,700 times four? Okay. years, which is a long time. Okay, on to light equations. So what is the frequency of orange light? <coughs> we have to use our light equation, C equals to lambda nu. Okay, or we saw it as nu is equal to C over lambda. Okay, and we are given that. Remember that the speed of light C is always equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we're going to do 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over, notice it's already in meters, woo! So don't have to convert. You can plug it right in. Okay, we're going to solve for that. So 3e8 divided by 6.05e negative 7. I'm going to convert it again into scientific notation. We get 4.96 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay, frequency is measured in hertz. Okay, energy. Okay, energy is a different equation. Notice there's no, we're given meters, but there's no meters here. There's no uh, wavelength here. Wavelength is lambda. So we're going to have to use that for, we have to use the initial equation first to find frequency. 10 to the 8 over 4.93 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, and remember, if it's not in meters, this one's in meters again. But if it's not, you have to convert it. Okay, so it's equal to 6. 0 0.085 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And then we can plug it into here. Energy is equal to uh, Planck's number. So H is always 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second. Really, the really long number. You can round it to 6.3. multiplying it by the number we just got, which is the frequency, 6.085 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay, and then we're going to get our energy, 6.626, oops. Good morning. Negative 34. And then we're going to times that by 6.085 E14. That'd be 4.03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, and that's the energy.